It's just a, a different world when you enter a cave. Caves are really complex systems with a lot of life down there. We have these large numbers of bats that hibernate in our Tennessee caves. And bats are amazing. You know, bats are the number one predator of night flying insects. They're small mammals that fly, so they have really high metabolisms, but they live a long time. And they're very intelligent. Handling these animals, you recognize right away that they're smart. So this is our tri-colored bat. It's one of our smallest cave hibernating bats. And normally this cave would have dozens of these, and so far this is the only one we've seen today. They're really being wiped out by white nose syndrome right now. White nose syndrome is caused by a fungus that's not native to North America. And it grows on bats while they're hibernating in caves and basically causes them to use up the energy they have stored to get through the winter. And these bats end up out on the landscape in February, March, looking for food and insects to eat, but it's still winter. Um, and they, they frequently just die of starvation. It was first identified in New York State uh, that was in 2006, and it has sort of radiated from that epicenter down here to the southeast. And we knew then that it was going to be a much larger issue than we had previously hoped. So in just 10 years, we've already lost millions of bats to this disease with no end in sight. And it's likely that we will see extinction events of bats here in North America in my lifetime if this disease is left unchecked. It's discouraging. So the Nature Conservancy is a worldwide conservation organization. We generally try to use the best available science to find practical solutions to problems. We knew that just sort of documenting the impacts and declines of that was not enough. So in our efforts to prepare for white nose syndrome and try and combat this disease, we've really honed in on three separate things to really work on. Doing cave surveys, funding and important research, and then our artificial cave project. We are in the artificial cave that Nature Conservancy built, and it is the first planned, designed, and engineered artificial bat hibernacula. We really hope that this can be a facility to advance research. We can't help manage those for us in a way that's better for the bats if we don't know where they are. So we'll weigh them, put bands on them, <laughs> sort of life history information like forearm length. So we have to give the bats a little haircut before we can apply the surgical adhesive and putting a transmitter on their backs before they're released. You think we need a little more, is that okay? That looks good to me. Okay. And then we'll have a combination of two airplanes and several ground crews trying to follow these bats on the landscape. One of our biggest success stories we've had with fighting white nose syndrome comes from Georgia State University. We've developed a research funding proposal where the Nature Conservancy, Georgia State, the U.S. Forest Service, and Bat Conservation International are working together to test different ideas and see what works. Folks at Georgia State have sort of honed in on this one native bacteria. It seemed to work really well at keeping the fungus from growing. The bats were treated and then survived through the winter and were released last spring. And it was the first really successful field trial we've seen um, in combating white nose syndrome. Okay, we're getting ready to let go. Piper and Ricky, you can just let them go. Eight eight two is on the wing. It goes nine to seven four. So it's likely that there will be no silver bullet for white nose syndrome. I think our best path forward is to continue advancing on the successful research that we've seen and identifying and continuing to fund new critical research moving forward. It really is an all hands on deck situation and we're hopeful that people will be champions for bats in whatever way that they can.